It's hard to believe that nearly two thirds of boat that sink do so at dock. We're gonna learn how to avoid that fate. Today, we're gonna focus on inspecting through hull fittings, kind of sharing some of our experience, but also the tips to look through what to look for and some of the stories of through hull fittings gone wrong from my past. <laughs> Those video clips are from Captain Retriever, a towboat US captain. His video content always reminds me to check our own boat uh, to make sure we don't have leaks because I don't want to be calling towboat US. You want to make sure you have uh, the boat insurance though in case you ever need it. <laughs> the natural state of any boat is on the bottom. According to Boat US, the vast majority of boats that sink do so at the dock. In fact, 69% of boats that sink uh, sink at the dock, only 31% uh, underway. And the majority of those that sink at dock, it's because of a failure of a through holes fitting. I'm Dave, a former boat captain, and here at Echo Zulu Cruising, our goal is to help answer your express cruiser questions so you can focus on enjoying the water, particularly helping those who are moving up to a bigger boat, want to learn more about the systems, and just how to manage a larger boat. You want to know every location on your boat where the manufacturers put a hole uh, through the hull for some component. You want to inspect those every time because that's the first place where water could come on board. If you have a water uh, water on board, you want to look at those closely to make sure they're all uh, secure and, and holding. We have a Juno 1095. Love the boat. If you want the full tour, you can check out this video. The 1095 has four through hole fittings uh, throughout the boat. So we have outboards, so we don't have any of the uh, engine uh, intake and and cooling or the issues with a stern drive or a shaft through the hull where you have stuffing boxes to work at. We inspect these four points every time we go out to make sure that there's not water on board. The first one is forward. It's for our uh, Blackwater holding tank. We normally have that shut. It's the discharge, so you can't use it on inland waterways. We have a zip tie on it to make sure that it's closed. You want to inspect around that in case there is, is a failure, but it's the one that's the least likely to open and close on board. The second one is in our uh, on our AC unit. You have to crawl back to get a view of this. Uh, it's it's in our little mechanical room. We inspect this this compartment for, for water, but the AC is the uh, the through hole fitting that we open and close the most because we have it sometimes on at the dock we have it often when we're underway so this is a through hole fitting that is open and closed the most often one it's the one that gets the most use and it's the one we always want to make sure we're inspecting uh, before we go underway and make sure we close it when, when, when they're at dock. The third and fourth through hole fitting are in our lazarette, they're for our Panda generator. One is for the exhaust, one is for the uh, the intake for, for the uh, seawater strainer for the coolant. So those are, when we're using the generator, we'll have those on. So those are the four through hole fittings that we'll inspect. And we're gonna look at the caps to make sure that there's no cracking and there's no salt uh, around the gasket. We're gonna look at the hoses to make sure there's no cracks in the hose and we're gonna look at rust, uh, for rust on any of the uh, the ring clips that are holding those, those in place. In addition, e each one of these is slightly recessed, so we wanna look for water that's inside uh, in inside that area that could be an indication that water could be weeping slowly uh, into that. So the, the bilge overall we look at, but we also look in that little recessed area to make sure there's not water that, that's coming directly into that. We recently found water in our bilge and uh, upon inspection found it was our freshwater leak rather than a through haul, but water in the bilge is always something that you want to understand. If you want to look at how to deal with a freshwater leak uh, when you find one, you can see how we handle that on our freshwater system. But inspecting the boat's going to tell you uh, is there an issue to be dealt with, and if you see water in your bilge that, that's not normally there, you want to understand where it's coming from. Don't ignore it. Don't let the bilge pumps be, be taken care of it. Find the source of it uh, on your boat. You should get to know your boat, what's typical, what's normal. Our uh, bilge is normally completely dry, so if we see water in it, we're going to make sure we, we try and uh, address that. Stick around while we talk about the equipment you need uh, to have on board to stop a leak. If one comes through a through hull fitting, we're going to talk about some of our experience that have happened on boats where we've had through hull fittings fail before. Uh, in the meantime, let us know if you have any questions uh, about boating that we can answer. Our goal is to be really accessible to other boat owners, use our experience, our lessons on our boat to help others be more comfortable on their boat. Uh, like and subscribe if, if you like uh, the content that we have. What do you want to make sure you have on board in case there is a problem with the through hole fitting? It's a four spar uh, 
plug. We have these, they're flexible, there's a, and a lot of different size. We got them from uh, West Marine. There's a link in the description. But we have four of these on board. I keep two of them uh, next to the helm in a bag, so those would be used interior. And then we have two of them that we keep in the lazarette, so they'd be uh, right on hand if there was uh, if we needed them there. But it's a, it's a plug that's that's flexible. It can it, it can go in, and it's basically like a wine stopper uh, if you needed one. They're they're relatively inexpensive to have. I like the flexible ones because you don't know what size um, hose may have a problem. But having them on board is a nice piece of mind uh, to 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 keep them. And I've used them, so I, I kind of swear by them because I want to have them handy and and know where they are on the boat. So two in the lazarette because that's where two through hole fittings are, and then two are in in our our go bag under the helm in case we need them uh, in, inside the boat on here. I've been on a few boats that have developed leaks well underway, and that's why I've developed this obsession with through hull fittings and, and, and inspecting uh, prior to leaving the dock and make sure we have the equipment on board. One of the dive boats I worked on in the Keys before I got my captain's license, we'd just gotten the US Coast Guard inspection. So it had been pulled out, the Coast Guard had inspected the safety of the vessel. It was our first day back in the water. We were out and the captain said, huh, the boat's running really sluggish. Went in the forward compartment and it was, uh, it was leaking, it was flooding in the head. The head uh, had, in fact, started leaking. The hose to the head had come loose on the in, uh, the saltwater intake. So, simple thing: went to turn off that valve, and the handle had sheared off. It passed inspection the day before. It had worked the day before for the Coast Guard. The handle sheared off. We had a leak on the hose. Luckily, we we had uh, a, a plug on board, and we plugged that. Uh, we were able to get the water out of that while we were under the way. Passengers went about their day. We plugged it on both sides while we were uh, out on the reef, while our passengers uh, were enjoying themselves. Went back to the dock, pulled out of the water, and, and replaced that, uh, that valve the next day. But even if it, something worked yesterday, doesn't mean it's going to work tomorrow. It's one of the biggest lessons I've learned uh, on board a boat. So you always want to inspect it and don't assume because something was fine yesterday, it's going to work today. Remember, the sea is really unforgiving. So a, a, a boat check before you go out, it's not a chore, it, it's really part of safety and it's peace of mind for you and your passengers when, when you do a quick one uh, before you leave, leave the dock. When you're not underway, you wanna shut your, your seacocks, the, those valves, um, to make sure there's not water coming in. If you're in a hot place where you're running AC and you're not at your boat, you wanna make sure that that boat's checked regularly because that's the first place that's likely to fail um, uh, eventually is, is that AC uh, through hull fitting. Like on all things on boating, planning ahead is the best way to enjoy yourself. Until next time, hope your boat stays above the water and have fun, be safe, be happy.